All right, we're now live. Today we have Slug Christ, an artist from Atlanta, signed to Awful Records with us. Um, to say the least, Slug sound is different. Um, it's dope. Um, we're happy to have him here with us. So my first question for you, Slug, is how did you and Awful Records link up? Um, I met Keith Charles back in 2010 because he bought weed from a bassist that I was playing in a band with. So uh, he showed me his beats and I showed him my beats and we were like cool and I was going to go to a show that was like a few weeks later. So I went and it happened to be Ethereal's uh, Abstractica release party show. So that's where I met Ethereal. And Ethereal just blew me away with this music. Like uh, I thought we were on like the same page because I had been making uh, these trap beats that were uh, they were they were trap beats like that the percussion was very trap but it had all these uh, jazz chord progressions going on over it and shit and that's what Obi was doing at the time too so I was just like wow it was like my musical soulmate so I linked up with him and I just sort of slowly met everyone after. Okay, sweet. So the label's uh, owned and run by uh, um, Father, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, sweet. So when did you, uh, like, officially join Awful? Um, probably, uh, either, like, winter or fall of 2013 or 14. I don't remember. I'd always fucked with them with music, like, for years before, but I just wanted to, like, officially... Because some bullshit happened, and I want to get into it, but, like, basically I needed someone who was there for me that I, that I could, you know, do this shit with. And uh, I'd always been fucking with uh, Ethereal and Keith Charles and uh, Father, too, so I was like, I uh, just hit up that one day and was like, yeah, I'm trying to be awful officially, and he was like, I right, yeah, it's good. That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I kind of had a label situation where I ended up getting screwed over. The guy walked out on us, but um, aside from that, you're currently in Miami doing a show tonight, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, where is that? So if anyone is in Miami, they can catch you. Let me pull up the flyer on my Instagram, and I'll tell you. All right. Um, it's in... It's with Puya... He's gonna headline, and then me, Gom, and Rich Postlem are paying are playing. It's at twenty twenty four Northwest Twenty Second Court, Miami, Florida three three one four two, at the something venue. All ages twenty one and up, five dollars. All ages is ten dollars. All right, that's dope, man. Um. Sweet. So, talking about shows, um, tour. Is there a tour? Are you guys going to do an awful tour? Are you thinking about touring um, in general? Yeah. So, uh, this this summer, uh, Father is doing his like uh, his uh, headlining tour, and uh, all, of, all of Awful Records is going to support, or at least the people that can go on the tour are going to be the support for it. So, it's basically going to be Awful Records tour this summer. <laughs> Word. So, uh, what got you into music? What got me into music? I don't know. Probably just hearing it. I don't know. I like music. I like things that are pretty. I mean, I thought I uh, started playing in bands when I was like fourteen or fifteen. Uh, played in a lot of metal bands, like a lot of grindcore, math grind shit. And, uh, and, but I had been making beats, like, uh, from the time up, probably from, how old, probably like 17 or something. So I'd always been making beats, but, um, then I was doing, like, some indie rock, surf rock shit for a while. And I didn't really start rapping, rapping until, like, 2012 or 13, something like that. But I mean, who like there? There's not a reason for me getting into 
into music, you know. There's not like some big thing that happened. I just like pretty things, you know. So I want to make pretty shit. There's nothing to it, you know. It's dope. I was listening to um, kind of like a backstory on you, like behind Slug. Um, and one of the um, things was that you don't really consider yourself a rapper. Like rapping is the least of you, but technically you are a rapper. Yeah. Um, like uh, I don't I don't rap on every song. Sometimes I might you know hit the R and B swag and just sing the whole entire time. You know I do that. Sometimes. Um, I definitely rap. But what I meant by that is I feel like the fact that I'm rapping is the smallest aspect of what I'm really doing, you know? Because I make all yeah. my own beats. I do all my own production. Nobody got to send me no beats. Let me say that right now. Please quit sending me beats because I make all my own beats. Please quit sending them. Anyways, um, yeah, so it's just a real small factor, you know? So that's why I don't like to call myself a rapper. I like to call myself, like, a musician or, better yet, a fucking artist. Or even better yet, a fucking just a philosopher. That's dope, man. Um, so, who is Slug? Um, you know, you're a musician, uh, very talented, talented one at that. Um, what else makes you up? I know you went to school for painting and some other things, but kind of like a backstory on uh, Slug. Okay, I was born in a fundamentalist Christian family. Uh, no one. Um, my sister. Uh, got married to a preacher. Um, my other sister is really cool, you know. But I was raised in Southern Baptist, down south, country, hellfire brimstone type churches, you know. So that's where I come from, and that's kind of the reason I chose the name Slug Christ, because uh, there was a lot of Christ shit, like, shoved down my throat as a child, you know. But I come from the middle of fucking nowhere, dude. I grew up in the middle of the country. But there was nothing out, me, out there for me, so I, that's why I started going down to... Atlanta and stuff in the city where the uh, art and the swag is. But, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, I don't know. I, I just got into music. Just I was really into I've always been into music. You know, my parents playing music, whatever. I was into whatever they played. You know, I didn't have any say into it or whatever. But, um, I don't know, around the time I was 15, I started playing in all those bands and shit, and that's really when I started, like, to realize that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, was make music and shit. It seemed like the only viable option. Or, or um, most unique experience um, in your career, uh, after a show, during a show, like, something just... Yeah, you want to hear a big-ass funny story? I'll tell you one. Okay. We went up, uh, Fat played a show up in Webster Hall in New York. I don't know if you know where that is, but we played I there. I know exactly where Webster is. Yeah, we played there. We fucked up the club, whatever, okay? We were stage diving, running off, you know. It was crazy. It was awesome. We fucked it up. Then, okay, we step off on the stage, and then we're out in the middle of the crowd just watching what's going on, and then fucking Buster Rhymes goes on stage. And Buster Rhymes is like, hey... What's up, y'all? We're like, yeah, Buster Rhymes, fuck yeah, that's that guy that's cool, yeah, it's all cool. And he goes up there and he's like, yeah, that shit that was playing earlier is cool and everything, but we're about to play that real hip-hop shit, that real New York shit. So he says that, right? And he brings out his artist, I don't know what the guy's name is, but he's the guy who does, I'm in love with the Coco. Oh, OT Genesis. Yeah, he brought him yeah. out. Which oh, is funny gosh. because it's not real New York shit. It's not real hip hop shit. It's real Atlanta shit that that guy is doing right now. You know, you know what I'm saying? It basically contradicted his entire statement. And we got hella pissed and we left the venue screaming, fuck Buster Rhymes, fuck Buster Rhymes. <laughs> and it was great. That's crazy, man. That, that's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, did you meet McConan through uh, Awful? Yep. Uh, we all met McConan when, uh, like, he came through for that uh, Nokia video shoot. And uh, okay. that's when a lot of people met him and shit. 
So after that, that's when he started coming through the barrio. You know, back then McConan was just another dude coming through the through a father's house. You know, just another dude coming through like he was like me. You know, and uh, that's how I met him, and uh, that's how a lot of people met him. And uh, now he's signed to Drake and a Grammy nominated artist. You know, and that's why McConan especially and Fat Two and Key, they all all three of those dudes really inspire me because. I, I saw uh, Fat come up, like, from nothing. I, call, I saw him come up all the way up. I saw McCona, and he was a little bit more glow than us. But then he, uh, I saw him go just skyrocket out of there, you know, from being a kid in the barrio to being I love McCona, you know. And it, it's just a beautiful thing, and it's one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen for me as a musician. That's dope, man. Yeah, uh, Nokia is probably one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. uh, artists you're working with, what can we expect from you in the uh, near future, or artists that you want to work with? Um, I just want to keep working. Whoever wants to work with me, you know, email me and I'll send you my feature rate. If you are like a cool guy, if I know your music or whatever you want to fuck with me, then just DM me on Twitter. I probably follow you. Word, word, yeah. I mean, I hit you up out of nowhere uh, for a clothing sponsorship, I believe, and mm -hmm. now you're, like, we're pretty close and shit, so, mm -hmm. it, so you're a hella cool dude. Um, all right, so visuals, music videos, um, yeah. are you working on anything currently? No, but we just dropped the On the Ocean video a few that, days that's, ago. I love that yeah. video, man. I think we filmed it on my birthday, and it dropped like three days later. And uh, yeah, it was yeah that was the last thing I dropped. As far as videos, I mean, I'm gearing up to start releasing a bunch of. Uh, me and Dexter filmed a video for a song that's gonna be on our split EP. Dexter has three EPs, one with uh, Gom, one with Stalin Majesty, and one with me. They're all collab EPs. Basically, him just producing for us, you know. And uh, so he wants to drop them all on the same day and shit. So when it drops, like that video will eventually come out. But we got it filmed and everything. But that song's not even up. And as far as songs that I want to do videos for that are out, I don't really have any because I'm gearing up to start uh, releasing this full length album. So probably the next few videos you see from me will be like me featured on other people's songs. Or uh, in the near future, I'm going to start dropping videos for my album, which is yet to be kind of, which is yet to come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, favorite TV show? I don't watch TV. You don't watch TV? My, Man, favorite, I... my favorite anime, though, is Fully Cooly. Word. I'm, I'm not being anime guy. I'll definitely That's all check I watch. Out. I don't fucking watch TV. I hate Walking Dead. I hate Breaking Bad. I hated it all. There's a bunch of drama. It's just people talking to each other. It's, in my opinion, it's boring and it feels like the same thing over and over. And I tried watching Breaking Bad. I got into it for a while, but I just got tired of watching it. And I don't fuck with TV. Like, I really, I just don't fuck with all the commercials and shit. You know, trying to brainwash me and shit. I don't really fuck with TV. It's like annoying to watch. On I just get on my laptop, you know, pull up fucking WatchCartoons.com and watch like hella anime all day. That's dope, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a TV guy myself. I mean, I'm a TV guy, but I don't watch like The Walking Dead or anything like that. Right, I'm yeah. more, um, more like a History Channel, um, kid. I'm just like that nerdy white kid. Who right. <laughs> I'm kind of like um, that too, dude. So, you were talking about um, Atlanta. Are you originally from the state of Georgia, or did you move to Atlanta? Um, no, from I'm, state? I'm born and raised in Georgia. I was born in Piedmont Hospital. Where? No idea where that is. It's in the middle of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I 
Man, what, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just answered all my questions. Uh, from DHZA, we have a question. Um, who is your favorite awful member? My favorite awful member hmm, is Slug Christ. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. dope dude, man. Yeah, he's a pretty good dude. You're right. All right. Um, for those of uh, you that are watching, you can ask Slug a question by using the hashtag S-L-U-G-N-U-M-B. That's Slug Num. Uh, no spaces or anything. And uh, we'll read your uh, questions live. Um, so, how old are you, by the way? I'm 24. I just turned 24 March 3rd. Okay, so um, where did you attend college for painting? SCAD Atlanta. It's a Savannah College of Art and Design, but uh, it's the it's a, like a little school of that in the middle of Atlanta. So that's where I went for, uh, that's where I majored in painting. Sweet, so what kind of um, painting do you do? <laughs> I mean, all through school and shit, it was a bunch of formal things we had to do. It was mainly focused on getting your technical skill up as a draftsman, you know, being able to render an object in three dimensions and make it look realistic, you know. That's all it really was about all through school. And then I dropped out of school and started doing more paintings that I wanted to do, which were uh, uh, more non-objective, uh, just uh, abstract, neo-abstract expressionism type shit. Um, Stuff like that, you know, not no no objectiveness in it. Uh, I everyone always sees things like in my non objective paintings, and they always see them. But I never try to put any imagery, any objective imagery in them. But they always uh, seem to find something in there. But yeah, I mean, I've done like a bunch of portraits and shit. But that's just because I had to sit through portrait painting class, you know, and like paint like a portrait every day. So I have a bunch of portraits and uh, shit like that, just like hallway drawings and shit from like drawing one and shit. Yeah, sweet, man. That's so, um, um, girls, you with anybody or are you just playing it? Not with anyone, no. Nah. Uh -huh. it's, it's hard with the music and everything as well. Yeah, and it's just hard. It's just hard to be with a woman in general. Yeah. Have it be in a relationship with a woman, it's just hard. Word. Um, I'll just have a couple last questions for you, and then um, you'll head out here. Um, So you said you're going out to LA, right? Uh, am I out to LA? No, I'm going out to Texas. For Texas. Yeah. Okay, sweet, sweet. Um, now who have you kind of met through your career that like really inspired you aside from um, McConan and Father and you um, know the artists? You a lot started? of a lot of those people I met on this trip down here to Florida, dude. Like uh. Fucking, uh, when we played at Rolling Loud, I walked up on stage. They had all the awful people walk on stage, and there was Chris Travis and Xavier Wolf standing off to the side, and I just went up to him, and I was like, yo, y'all are fucking dope. Like, y'all definitely inspired me to start rapping and shit, and, like, yeah, I just wanted to say that one time real quick. And then uh, Chris Travis told me, like, yeah, man, kill that shit, and it was cool. And I got to meet uh, Rob Banks, you know. I fucked around with him in the studio. That was cool. Yeah, Rob Banks is dope as hell. Yeah, um, and I met uh, Puya the other night. We filmed a commercial for the show we're playing tonight. And I met him. Work. Yeah, he's hella really cool too. Yeah, um... Who else is there that's kind of in that group? Um, there's so many, like, experimental trap artists out there. It's kind of like... 
know, it's just so cool to see this scene really growing because, you know, as a producer, I'm a, I, I produce, like, you know, your basic boom bad beats, like, uh -huh. you know. Like New York shit. Um, but my favorite music is, like, the music that you guys make. Uh -huh. And it's so dope because you look at it face value and it's just like, all right, what's going on here? And then you really dissect it and there's, like, all these different crazy chords that you guys are using and Right, yeah, none of us, a lot of us have a good knowledge of music theory. I mean, I know I do, I know Keith does, I know uh, Ethereal does. I think Sintel does, too. He chooses kind of not to even go that route, and a lot of us do that sometimes. We know all this music theory and shit, but we choose not to utilize it in a certain song because in a certain song we want to go hardcore and punk rock and fuck the shit up and not care about notes and shit like that, you know? But sometimes we want to make something beautiful and... Yeah, so we really do have a good grasp of, like, just music and uh, what sounds good, you know, what chord to go here and there, and what kind of cadence to put on this note that I'm going to sing, you know. Yeah, we start with it. And so, so are you, do you have um, music theory? Are you, did you study music theory at all? or I mean, I did. It's just something you pick up, really, uh, as you start to play. That, I mean, that, that's how it happened to me. It's just something I started to pick up on, and I started to get into it a little bit. I don't study it, like, on the reg daily, every day. You know, I just use the amount of knowledge I got right now to uh, do something cool with it. All right, man. Um, so what do you attribute your success to? Um, you know, I've watched you grow in the past few months. Uh, extensively, and uh, it's just crazy to watch the growth. I mean, you went from like, you know, I don't even know, man. It's just like to watch the growth is just really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, what I would attribute that to, it's really, dude, it's a random factor of a bunch of random things, you know, and, like, if certain things happen that'll glow you up a bit, and that those things will lead to other things that'll glow you up a bit more, you know, and it's really, it's, uh, it's not just one thing, it's a bunch of things that sort of just happen to happen, you feel me? And this yeah. whole, this whole come up nowadays, bro, you're, it's, whoever is, on right now, you know, who's ever on the radios, whatever, you know, it's not because they're good or anything, it's just because, like, how many people heard it or whatever, you know, so. A lot of it's politics as well. Yeah, exactly, so, like, I don't know. Yeah, you look at, like, the XXL freshman cover this year, and they, they got, like, cats like OT Genesis and stuff on, but by the same token, there's guys who've been grinding out there, um, you know, for years who aren't even being considered. And so, you know, that's just how the game works. Yeah, I mean, did you say extra, extra large? Is that what you said? Yeah, XXL magazine. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't really, I don't really care about none of that. I'll never, if I ever get on a XXL, whatever, it's cool, but I don't have any dreams of ever being on that shit because I don't, you don't really need to be on that shit if you're trying to do this thing. You don't really need all that, so... Yeah, I don't really know too much about it. Word. Um. So, what other Atlanta artists should we be on the lookout uh, for? What other dope artists in awful? Uh, okay, Lord North is gonna drop a goddamn atomic bomb on Atlanta and just on rap in general. She's got a crazy album gonna come out called Sick. Uh, it's got a bunch of beats on it from me, uh, a few features from me. Um, few feature, a few beats from everyone really, but it's gonna be the, um, that's what you should really be looking forward to. Also D um, or Dexter, you know, be on the lookout for all three of those projects. I think he wants to drop them like at the same day, same time, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, Fat is gonna drop his next, uh, the follow-up to Young Hot Ebony, who, and it's called Who's Gonna Get Fucked First. 
It was supposed to drop February. That was the first time we had uh, heard that he wanted to drop it, that he went on tour and shit, and you know how that goes. So who knows when it will really drop, but be on the lookout for that, definitely. Um, Archie stay working, so I know he's going to drop like five albums like this year, or probably like in the next few months. Word. Um, so what's your schedule look like? You know, you in the studio a lot, or do you have a home studio? Or we are. Uh, um, I got a studio in my bedroom, yeah, but um, that's really where I be most of the time recording is in my bedroom and shit. Um, I don't ever go to a studio. I hate that shit. Honestly, I'd rather just be by myself in my room and record it how I want to it and EQ it how I want to and not have to worry about all this fake ass shit going on with all these people sitting around me and shit like that and worrying about what they're thinking. I'd rather just be by myself in my room alone doing it. How it's yeah, always I, com I completely concur with that. I find it so much harder to actively like make a beat or something in the studio when there's mad people watching you compared right. to, you know, in your bedroom because you're just so comfortable there. Right. And that's why I find collab beats to be, like, some of the hardest things you'll ever do. Yeah, I don't fuck with that shit either, dude. I just would rather be, I want it to, if it, if you want me to make you a beat, I will sh gladly do that, you know. You want me to collab on a beat with you? No, because I just straight up don't like doing that shit because I'd rather it sound the way how I would want it to sound, you feel me? Like, I, why would I want to bring some other guy into this shit, you know? Yeah, I feel you. Uh, all right, we have a really strange question from Deep Fried Babies. Uh -huh. uh, if, there, if there was a zombie apocalypse and you were in a bunker with your mom, would you eat her? Um... I mean, bro, honestly, you don't know what kind of things you're thinking at that point. Like, maybe I would eat her, you know, if it's like a month and we haven't eaten, you know, we've been eating like rat turds and she's probably, she might be old or she might have like her arm blown off in the explosion, you know, like might be dying, like I might eat my mom. I'm not going to flex. I might do it. But I mean, maybe... You know, but that's if, it, if things just happen a certain way, you know. But on the other hand, like, you know, maybe I could positively uh, come out of the situation and save my mom's life and uh, just do the come up. So I don't know. You never really know until you're there in that situation, you feel me? That's that hypothetical bullshit that I don't fuck with. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's a, it was an interesting question. Mm hmm. Maybe one or two more questions, and we'll let you go. All right. Um, just had it too, man. Um, and I'm spacing. I think my ADDs, my ADDs, kicking back in here. Ask me what I'm about to drop. Um. Yeah, man. Um. So, Smug Christ is the tape, right? No. Smug Christ is just a form uh, that when me and Smug Mang, when we do the fusion dance, you watch Dragon Ball Z. Ew, you don't watch anime. I don't. I, I watch Dragon Ball Z. I know you watch Dragon, Dragon Ball, Z. Ball Z. Okay, you know the fusion dance? You know the fusion dance? I believe so. It's when you, you got, okay, just imagine another guy next to me, you know, you go like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and they go like, fusion, ha, ah, right, and they touch fingers, and they oh, fuse yeah, yeah, together, yeah, yeah. they fuse together, yeah. So Smug okay. Christ, Smug Christ is just, you know, fusion dance, Smug Ming, and Slug Christ, you feel me? We don't, I don't, we don't got uh, plans for a tape, I'd like to, we can do one, maybe in the future, when I'm not so goddamn busy and shit, but we don't got plans for a tape or anything right now. All right. All right. Lastly, um, where can we follow you? Where can we get in contact with you? 
Hey, look, Rich Cup Slim is here. Hey, who are you? We What's have, up, man? We have uh, 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 from Connecticut. We got featured um, plug on our blog today. We're doing a live interview, so there's actually people watching you guys live. Uh, uh, <laughs> you are crazy, son. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right, man. I'll let you go. Good luck at right, your dude. show tonight. Wait, dude. Were you going to ask me a question? Were oh, I thought you were heading out. No, um, I just I just had to open the door for them. Sweet. Um, Where can we like get in contact with you? Where can we like I, I included some of the information below, but what's your Instagram um, and some of the other um, social media platforms? That you have? Instagram is uh, sus underscore Christ. Twitter is slug underscore Christ, <laughs> and that's all you need to know. All right, man, you can connect with Slug uh, through that or shoot him an email if you're interested in a feature or um, buying a beat off of Slug. If you haven't heard Slug's beats, um, you definitely should. Is it freaking insane? Um, all right, man, uh, good luck at your show. Uh, you tonight. Yep. Uh, take care, man. Pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. All right. I'll catch you later, bro. All right. Peace out. Off the record. In the thing. 2015. On the chicken wing. I'm a damn dick. I'm a damn wing. Fuck your bitch, and I'll kill your man. Slugger. <laughs>